you know, we started off 2022 with secure software supply chain right at the forefront of everyone's minds, uh, kind of like running around flailing, thinking about log for shell. Uh, what to your mind has changed in the ensuing year? You know, uh, where, uh, <laughs> where are we now? Do you think? Well, I, I, I think globally we are probably still in pretty bad shape. Yeah. Um, the, the, the real, no one, of course, has implemented a global software supply chain fix yet, nor has, I mean, there have been ideas brought forward, but such a thing would require so much cooperation uh, and retooling that, you know, it, it doesn't seem practical to think that that will save us all, which means that organizations capable of and desirous to run Kubernetes at scale are going to have to look out for themselves. And yet, at the same time, um, and I was just speaking with a, a subject matter expert at Mirantis about this, a man named Daniel Virasamy, um, who is very knowledgeable about this stuff because he builds secure software supply chains all the time, um, who is talking now about something that he calls continuous proactive security, mm -hmm. um, where, where, where folks who build secure software supply chains all the time have enough of a worked playbook and enough pre-built automation to begin being opinionated, both about the process, all the, actually it's different processes that, that need to be executed continuously. And he reminds us that we're talking about every layer of the stack, right? We're talking about things that happen at the, app, app, you know, at the application layer with the software supply itself. And then all the other extrinsic factors that modify um, the behavior of clusters around applications, right? I mean, you have stuff that's going in and making configuration changes. You have to be, <laughs> you have to be concerned about things like that because you can be opening holes all over the place. And if everything is, of course, automation can be, it has to be the solution because no one can keep up with the complexity without, you know, huge levels of automation, but automation can scale, also be yeah. the curse, right? Because it speeds you up, it scales you out, it it forces more things to happen, um, you know, under the covers of containerization and inside complex manifests that make people glaze over. You know, human review is not, um, you know, is not appropriate for mitigating challenges at scale. Um, the the other thing that that uh, uh, Daniel um, told me about. Um, and uh, he's doing a webinar on February 22nd about this. Um, uh, we may talk about that when we come back uh, after the uh, new year, that um, a, a shocking percent of large organizations using containers and Kubernetes are presenting uh, attack surfaces to the internet that include literally thousands of CVEs, thousands yeah. of CVEs. And, and he says, and I found you know, news reports to back this up, that it takes um, about a year to resolve, to, 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 um, to fix half those problems. So there is this, you know, we, we're, everyone is behind the curve. Um, no one has a system that has no CVEs or virtually no one has a system that has no CVEs. Many have literally thousands of CVEs. New CVEs are coming in from the supply chain literally all the time, right? Part of the fruit of having software that's continually <laughs> being improved <laughs> by communities. And, you know, anyway, the amazing power of community. And, um, and, and, you know, and so it's a, you know, it's a bad and, and indeed progressively worse and worse situation. So, you know, we all have to do stuff about it and continuous proactive security is maybe the way.